It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Bet smarter with daily advice from America's leading handicapper, Lee Sterling of Paramount Sports on the Locked On Bets podcast. Follow Locked On Bets today on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Seminoles. I'm your host, Drake, and joining me from a undisclosed location is my beautiful sun-kissed best friend, Dave. Dave, what's up, you beautiful starfish, sun-kissed god angel? How's it going, baby? It's, it's going, man. The weather's perfect up here in New York, not undisclosed. Uh, yeah, life's good. That's good to hear, man. It's good to hear, man. I haven't seen you in a little bit. It's really glad to see you here coming back down too as well. And also, I'm going to be seeing you in almost, what is it now? Like less than four soon. weeks? It's soon. Because we will all be up at the Notre Dame game. I am psyched. You're psyched. Holly psyched. Stacy psyched. psyched. I work up. But we're not here to talk about that. We actually, we're here to talk about a something that we, Dave and I started actually, you know, back when it was anonymous and we're bringing it back now for Lockdown Seminoles. That is the... Our favorite, you know, me and Dave's like kind of baby. It is Triple D's, our Dunks, Dribbles, and Dimes, our basketball-centered podcast, or well, segment of the podcast. And today we're talking about the what's going on tonight, since you're listening to us Thursday, the NBA draft. Because Florida State has one special talent that is probably going to be a top five pick. And we also have perhaps potential late second round picks as well. But Dave, he's one of your favorite players. I'm going to give the floor to you. What do you think that we should expect seeing from Scotty Barnes? Well, I, look, if he's not picked in the top six, something went horribly wrong. I, I said it in my little one-minute preview. Don't be shocked if he goes in the top five. And Scotty Barnes is a special basketball player. And it's funny because if you ask, like, most casual Florida State basketball fans, they may feel like he let them down or disappointed this year, coming in as the highest-ranked recruit ever in Florida State basketball history. He averaged, like, 10 points a game. He had good assist numbers. but his numbers didn't jump out at you like a lot of people would think, oh, that's a definite lottery pick. But that wasn't Scotty Barnes' only contribution. That man is an animal on the defensive end of the floor. He can defend arguably all five positions on the floor with his length. He's 6'9". He plays like he's seven feet. He has a huge wingspan. He jumps out of the building. He's as athletic as any player you're going to see. And He's the kind of guy I expect to make an early impact in the NBA, especially on the defensive side of the floor. Got a little bit to work on on the offensive end, and that's probably what frustrated Florida State fans, but the talent's there. I am about to say, because they're the one comp that everyone has been saying, and I kind of said it, you know, from day don't, one. Don't say Draymond. No, 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 no. I wasn't going to okay. say Draymond. I think I, Draymond, actually, like a lot of people are saying that. I, I kind of see it. But I don't I, get it. I do because like he it is the positionless basketball type of thing. And like Draymond can guard one through five really well. He's amazing at defense and he has he has that intensity and tenacity for that. But I'm gonna go to an earlier comp I had at the beginning of the year. I think he is extremely similar athleticism wise and skill wise to Ben Simmons. And a lot of fans I talked about it with the lockdown Raptors co- a host when they had me on a few weeks ago, where he doesn't have a shot yet. Do you think that's a concern? It's going to be actually, it's actually fixable when he goes to the next level? See, I don't know whether Ben Simmons I, – look, I, wait, I should say, I think Ben Simmons doesn't have a shot. I should say I don't know what the degree of Scotty Barnes' shot is going to be yet. It, it just wasn't his game in college. He took shots, but he was the kind of guy that could slash to the rim, and almost nobody could stop him. He's like Jonas when he decides to try to attack the hoop. And I think you're going to see him develop a better jump shot than Ben Simmons. I don't think he's going to be that kind of pigeonholed player who only has to take high percentage shots or he ain't making it. I don't think that's the reality we're going to see. And I also think he's a, I also think he's a lot better of a defender than Ben Simmons. I know. Didn't Ben Simmons have a really? pretty good year? Yeah, I'm about I to say, do. Ben I Simmons think, is like all NBA defense this past I, year, I, defensive player of the year conversation every single year. Like he is like uh, an elite defender. So that's a, that's a, that's a huge thing to say. Ben Simmons, uh, Sky Barnes might be better than that. I expect Scotty Barnes year one, if he gets enough minutes to make the all NBA defensive team. And I expect him to be competing for it. If not on that list, every single year, he's got the quickness to defend the point position and he's got the strength, length and 
ability to jump out of the building to defend easily the four and possibly up to the five, especially with the way the NBA is going smaller now. I mean, that's true. And then, I mean, one thing we do wish that he would do a lot more is like he is when he does decide to slash towards the rim, he is a matchup nightmare because he's so big yep. and so fast and so strong. But you need to like yell at him to do that because they're like, I don't know whether it's him playing under Coach Ham, tell him to tone it down a little bit more, yeah. which I think could probably be partially with the reason. But like, I really do want to see him like take advantage. Like, he like he is a God given talent and like for this reason. So I hope he, when he goes to the NBA, like some of the coach will be like, hey, do you, man, just do you. Yeah, it's interesting because I'm not really sure what to chalk that up to. You saw last year, Trent Forrest didn't seem to have a problem getting shots up and making them whenever he wanted to. It didn't seem, he was also an upperclassman, so that could play into it. But with a talent like Scotty Barnes, I don't know, I would just have a hard time believing that Hamilton would have him feel skeptical in making and creating and taking shots. I just, I don't think that was it. I know, he, I mean, he was injured part of the year. That could play into it. But That's true. I expect his offensive game to develop and his defensive game doesn't need to develop a lot more from where it already is. So then I already gave you what my kind of comp was for Ben Simmons. I kind of want to ask you then, I, I said a little bit a lot to Raptors. I know what you think. What do you think is this, the pro player comp for a Scotty Barnes? And not only that, what do you think is his ceiling? And also what do you think could be his floor if his, if his shooting woes never, ever, you know, get repaired? Uh -huh. I mean, if look, his floor is like a Gary Payton, right? Like the kind of guy that's going to play defense that just pisses everyone off and he's going to make a career for himself playing on the defensive end. And there is nothing wrong with being a Gary Payton. That's a Payton Hall of Famer, before. Dave. That's a, that's a uh, really high floor, he, dude. He was just ever an offensive guy. Like I, I'm talking like defensively, I think he can be that type of player and I don't see him ever being a liability on that end. I think that is... That's fair. I think that kind of defensive talent is his floor. Offensively... I don't, I don't know. I mean, he has, it, you saw flashes of him looking like Jonas. That's why I said that. Like when Jonas wants to get to the hoop, he's not, he's not LeBron. He's not as big as LeBron. He's not as strong. I'm not going to compare anyone to LeBron, arguably the greatest player ever. I'm not a huge Jonas fan, as you know. Oh, I was uh, to say like, cause you were saying that he was basically the uh, stat stuffing Stefan Marbury who would never win a championship and look who we are a week later. They actually did win it all week last look, week. Chris Middleton, Chris Middleton won a championship. Oh, shut the the up, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, look, look, if he can develop his shot, I don't see any reason why with his athleticism, that couldn't be his ceiling, a player like that. He's got, he's got the strength and quickness to get inside pretty much whenever he wants, if he gets that confidence going. And when he tries to, he does it. No, I mean, I like that a lot. I mean, I kind of see, to me, his ceiling for me, I'm not going to say Giannis, but to me, Giannis right now is on the track to be a top five best player ever. If you look oh. at his accolades right now, most improved. NBA MVP twice, all defensive player of the year, rookie, not, sorry, not rookie of the year, that was Dame Lillard that year, but also NBA Finals MVP too, all-star all every year except for his rookie year. Like, he is probably right now, accolades-wise, at 26, it's insane. But for Scotty Barnes, I think a really good comp is someone that you actually did bring up, if he gets that shot, is Tracy McGrady. And yeah. Tracy McGrady, to me, was one of my favorite players of all time. Big guy, able to distribute the rock, had great core vision, beautiful shot once he was able to nail it down. So I think Tracy McGrady probably is the best comp for that. It's the perfect thing. And he'll be the – wherever Scotty goes, which we'll go into the next segment, he'll be the best part for that team. And if you guys need a great part for your vehicle, go to rockauto.com. Folks, I have been telling you guys weeks and weeks, months since, me, since Max, Dave, and I joined Locked On Seminoles that Rock Auto is the best place to get any car or auto parts you need. My Theo Francisco, shout out Delray Beach, Florida, has been, has been a customer of them for 20 years as they are a family-owned company. You will grab, you will see certain pieces, certain parts on there, cost $155, and then you'll go to the retailer, the actual dealership, and it'll be $300. So head on over to rockout.com and use Locked On, locked on in their How'd You Hear About section so they know that we sent you over there. rockout.com, family-owned business, amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. So then, Dave, now I kind of want to ask you, where do you, since we, we I, I'll pull up the top five picks right now, because we, we kind of are in agreement right now that we think Scotty Barnes is a top five pick, because that's where it's going to go. But yep. where do you see him fitting in the best? And where is, and also, in the respect, where do, you see, where do you see him going? No, I mean, look, you see a lot of mock drafts projecting him number five to the Magic right now, and I think that makes a lot of sense. I, I, 
I would be I, I would be a little surprised if he jumped in the top four. I mean, there's there's four pretty well cemented prospects in those slots. So I think I think best case scenario for him is going to the Magic, and I think he'd be a good fit there. I think it'd be good for him to stay in the state of Florida. You'd have a lot of fans behind him. I don't see him falling below the Thunder at six. And look, you see, you also see a lot of mock drafts projecting them to take a guard. The yeah. thing that makes Scotty Barnes unique is that he's a point guard in a six foot nine body. His floor vision was just ridiculous with some of the passes he made this year. And it wasn't just like one offs. Like it seemed like he was doing it almost every game, making a ridiculous pass. And he's, he's a guy that'll go out and get you five plus assists any given game. So I think, I think if he drops below five, the Thunder would be a good spot looking for a guard. And I think the magic would be a good spot for him in the, in the top five. See, like, I don't want him to go to the Magic. And I know, I mean, I'm not, a, I mean, I don't like the Magic to begin with anyways, because I'm, I'm, I'm a Heat fan, but also I don't trust the Magic to develop him well into the player that he can be. We see right now what they do with Jonathan Isaac, who is a decent, good, he's a good player, but also was no, another former Florida State lottery pick where he has not reached the ceiling that we all thought that he could be. And to me, I don't think Scotty Barnes is going to play point, play point guard at the next level. I know that you like that a lot because he does have yeah. un, unparalleled court vision, but I think with that size, I don't think he has the, I don't think he has the speed to keep up with some of these faster point guards. I mean, he, he, he could he could probably for the lower echelon, the middle tier process, but against an elite point guard, I don't see him probably excelling that well. I personally think that he he'll go over to the small forward spot because I think he'll have the speed, the quickness, and the size for that to bully some of those people right there. And to me, I think his best fit actually is with the OKC Thunder, especially with him playing with Shagels Alexander. I think that'd be a perfect fit for him, but. One thing I am hearing is that if Jalen Suggs isn't there at four. Yeah. Because, and because you know, right now the Raptors are going through a transitionary period with Kyle Lowry heading out. Yep. Him going to Toronto is very interesting. And that's actually someone that they, I, when I was on their show, they discussed him at length. They are really, I think the best term to put it is, is fascinated by what Scotty Barnes can be. Do you, do you agree? Yeah. No, I, I, I mean, the Raptors have had some recent success, unlike the Magic. I'd like to see him go to a spot where maybe he can win some games, maybe do something of consequence. So, yeah, I don't hate that. Yeah, I mean, if he goes to, and if he goes to Toronto, he'll play with you know Spicy P, OG Ananobi, Fred Van Fleet. That, that he, that's already a solid team, and he also like there. He's not going to be asked to do everything at once if he goes to Toronto. He can actually sit there for probably be a six man like he was a four state, develop a little more, work on that shot before being baptized by fire. And then, you know, he'll go in there at it towards the end of the year. And that's kind of when you see your coming out party for Scotty Barnes the last month, maybe month and a half, maybe into the playoffs. Because if he goes to the Magic, I just don't trust the Magic to actually do anything right at all whatsoever. I mean, ever since Penny Hardaway and Shaq left after, was it 98, 99, they have not yeah. been the same at all, whatever since. Well, you know, and I'll point out, like, there's a lot of love going around for Jalen Suggs in this draft and for good reason. But if you look at his numbers, he barely averaged more points per game than Scotty Barnes. He had similar, he had almost the same assist numbers and the same field goal percentage. So, I, I mean, I don't, I'm not going to say I think anybody's better than Scotty Barnes in this draft. I mean, I, I don't, I don't think Jalen Suggs is better than him. I don't think he's a better prospect than him, but look, I mean, if they want to, if they want to scoop Scotty at four, I'm, you're not going to hear any heartache from me. No, man, because I mean, because we're in agreement that Cade Cunningham, the Oklahoma State point guard, is going number one. That kid is, that kid's really, yeah, that, really, 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 really good. He's insane. He's like, nuts. like, folks, if you ever want to look at a really cool hoops mixtape, look up Cade Cunningham's. It's pretty damn cool. It's pretty damn good. Jalen Green, as like, he's also becoming from the G League, which is the new kind of like not is like the minor league system for the NBA, but it's where yeah, it's an option for kids that they, if they don't want to go to college instead of going to college, actually they, they go to the G League. He went there, played with you know older. Uh, players and like he was amazing. I think he averaged like almost 18 points a game as a 17 year old against like mid people in their mid 20s, which is absurd. And then you have Evan Mobley going at three, who is from USC, who I think is going to go. The the Cavs need him because Kevin Love is gone now. So that's like yep. the top three are basically locked in. If, yeah, the, if right. they if they go as any different from then, you, folks, you can come talk to me because I was like, listen, I'm about to put like my mortgage on all those three of those picks happening on betonline.ag. But Jalen Suggs, I kind of agree with you. I like him a lot because he is a dual sport athlete, quarterback, and point guard. But Scotty Barnes, I think, has the much higher ceiling. Yeah, and look the, again, Scotty Barnes is six foot nine. Jalen Suggs is six foot four. 
that's not just a height thing. I, I, I only disagree with what you said earlier in terms of the fact that you're not sure that he could guard the point position. I absolutely think he's quick enough to guard the point position. And that's important because if you were to put him in, in a, in a rotation at point, who the hell is going to guard a six foot nine point guard? Who? I, I mean, Ben Simmons? There's not a lot of those. I, okay. I mean, sure. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, ben, maybe Ben Simmons. If, but ben, if him, Philadelphia lets him back into the city. <laughs> uh, other than other than him, it ain't happening. And I want a guy, I want a guy that's six foot nine able to move with a point guard guarding somebody like Russell Westbrook. So no, I mean, that's I mean, that's fair. Just me. I mean, we don't see eye to eye on that, but that's the beauty of us having a podcast. We get to discuss that, get to commiserate about that. Max, I use your word. Shout out to you. Yep. I know you're not here. We yep. love you. We miss you. But yeah, I'm actually excited to see. I, like to me, like I said, I hope Scotty goes. You know, to OKC, maybe to Toronto. Hell, if he drops to seven to Golden State, hangs out with Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, that's not going to happen. It like I, no. I, I really don't. That's going to be that's like an Aaron Rodgers esque fall of a, like a prospect of that high of that kind of a caliber. So, folks, look tomorrow towards to see Scotty Barnes. You know, draft probably going to number five to the Orlando Magic, and if you. And if you want to, you know, to play those kind of odds, go head on over to our folks over at betonline.ag. Betonline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Get the all latest news, odds, and info on MLB, NBA, NHL, and UFC MMA. And folks, I have been on the table tennis train for the Olympics. Trust me, they have those odds there as well. It's a great time. I'm up at very early hours in the morning, like four in the morning, five in the morning before work. But hey, it's a great time. Head on over to the website. Use your mobile device today. And when you sign up, remember to use the promo code locked on to get 50%, 50% welcome most on your first deposit. Promo code locked on L O C K E D O N. Bay Online, your online sportsbook experts. Drake, I need to use the platform we have here for a second. Your floor is yours, Mr. Wise. Wise Esquire. The Yankees are finalizing a deal for Joey Gallo. Ah! I actually like Joey Gallo, but that's no, like, look, but like you have enough of the same big dudes that don't run. I like Joey Gallo too. The fact that Brian Cashman doesn't understand that you can't just like get a bunch of bats on up and have zero pitching and still make a playoffs or win a world series blows my mind. Don't know how he still has a job. Time to press the reset button. Yankees fans everywhere. Next up. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to feel bad for you because you're a Yankees fan and a Pats fan, but we're going to move on to what we were discussing earlier. That's hilarious. They're getting Joey Gallo. I actually like him, but I, I kind of agree with you there. We have that was a problem with the Marlins. But I want to look at the other prospects that we have actually heading into the draft. And that yep. is our boys, Balsa Kopravica from Serbia and yep. Raekwon Gray. Who do you think out of the two actually would get drafted earlier? I, th- I think probably Balsa just because you'll usually take a flyer on somebody of that. I mean, with that kind of frame, he's, he's big. He has muscle that he can put on and it's tough to find a big man with an offensive skill set that'll translate to the NBA these days. Yeah. That, that said, you made a comparison earlier this year that I really, really liked for Raekwon, which is he had moments this year where he looked like James Harden and we're not going to tell you he is James Harden, but damn, could that boy move through the paint and he improved so much he deserves to get drafted at the end of the second round he really does and like and the way i said about because i i mean i'm not saying it's james harden james harden is probably one of the best scorers in our lifetime and also right. if you look statistically wise he's probably one of the best scorers in the history of the nba but the way that raekwon was able to drive to the basket with the euro step at his size because that boy thick, yeah that boy thick, thick with like three c's man Yep. And like he was moving in there and he was able to bully his way in there and score. And you just had an acumen to, you know, get towards the basket. And I'm agreeing with you though, that I think the flyer is going to be taking more on Balsa. Cause I yeah. do think that I, I can see something happening where Balsa, maybe he gets drafted, has the draft rights, but who will sign over overseas for a few years yep. to play with people like, you know, that are a little bit older and get a little larger. And that's very common when it comes to foreign players, especially if they're from the European, uh, European origin. And that to me is something that I can, I wouldn't be surprised if you see balls taking like in the forties and then Ray the probably at the him. end. Huh? The Maverick, the Mavericks will take him. They take every European. I mean, yeah. I mean, they have Christoph Porzingis. Actually, they might be geared rid of Christoph Porzingis, but I mean, that's kind of their MO, right? They take Luca, yep. they have Christophs, they have, um, they used to have Boban. Like they like the, they like stashing, you know, the players overseas and then bringing them over. 
And so yep. why would they, why would they not do the same with, with uh, Balsa? Yeah, I like it. I like, I, I think both of them demonstrated enough last year to warrant being drafted. I still don't think it was smart for Balsa to leave. I think he could have developed even more and pretty much locked himself in as a draft pick if he continued to progress. But look, it's all business. Totally understand. No hard feelings. And who do I think could be productive earlier in the NBA? I definitely think Raekwon could. I think he can absolutely give a team a few minutes, you know, five, 10 minutes here and there and, and put the ball in the basket. I mean, that's, that's something that shocked us last year, like you said, which is, damn, that guy is way too quick for what he looks like he should be. And that's a skill set you kind of can't teach. You don't see a lot of that. Yeah, and with Balsa also, it's like, I think that he, his ceiling, in my personal opinion, is Nurkic. Baby Nurkic, yeah. what we call him a little bit. I think that's something I really comp. Like a, a decent shop is able to get in there and kind of like get the boards, be very physical, that old 90s style basketball. That's why, my, that's why Max liked him a lot. But his defense is definitely something that needs to be criminally worked on because it, it, it does leave a lot to be desired. I appreciate his tenacity, but yeah, the skill set there on the defensive end really has to progress if he's going to make a name for himself in the in the NBA. If you if you set the over under at two Florida State players being drafted, what would you bet on? And there's no pushes. And there's no pushes? You have to bet one or three. <sighs> yeah, yeah, dude, I hate whole numbers. You know, whole numbers are for cowards, man. Um, <laughs> I probably wouldn't then go under if there's no pushes. Yeah. Because I would I say Scott, right. because I think it's two. I think the number, especially, I think we're going to see two Knowles drafted tomorrow. Kind of how we saw uh, Mafondo Kambengale and Terrence Mann in that same draft class we saw drafted. Because I don't see – I see Raekwon probably getting drafted towards the end of the draft, maybe not even drafted at all, and maybe he has like a flyer contract, which kind of would kind of be sad because he did improve a lot this year. I think he did a really disservice by leaving early. But, hey, listen, like, go get your money, go get your bread. That, you know, best of luck to you. We love you on here anyways. And then Balsa, I think, is the other one that's going to get drafted because I don't see MJ Walker – after the year that he had, especially with injury issues, that I don't see him getting drafted either as well. So I really do hope I'm wrong. I hope we hear three names get called, but I definitely think it's two. Yeah, and just remember, just because somebody doesn't get drafted doesn't mean that they don't end up as a drafted free agent, end up in Europe. There's a lot of good options for players that don't get drafted. And I'll tell you this, I know I know from secondhand, hearing it from former Knowles, the life over in Europe playing basketball is pretty damn good. Yeah, we need to have uh, me and Max's former fraternity brother, my pledge brother, Ian, on here. Ian Miller, for those of you who don't remember, he played point guard uh, for Florida State from 2011 to 20, I want to say 14 or 15. He he backed up Michael Snare and then took over for Snare when he left. And he, I love Ian, man. He also has the cutest kid, Drew. Such a cute kid. I love Ian. Such a good guy. He he was in my sport management class. He was a cool kid. Dude, he, him and Cam Irving were the only ones that whenever my brother came out to visit and he left, he's like, hey, man, how's Evis? I'm like, Shit, man, you're my little brother. Damn, bro. Like, he's the nicest dude ever. And like, I wish the best of luck with him too. But folks, that is it for today. We want to keep it short, sweet, simple, and to the point, especially with basketball. But we are excited, you know, for NBA draft. I'm going to be watching. Dave's going to be watching. We might have something on the action for that. But hey, listen, that's between me and Dave and Bandline.ag, folks. Head over there. But folks, thank you all so much for the love and support. Please, if you can, don't forget to rate, review, like, share, subscribe, or follow, or whatever on whatever podcast platform you use, whether it be Apple, Stitcher, Spotify. And we'll see you next time on Locked On Seminoles. Take care, everybody. Who knows? This episode is brought to you by Spotify Greenroom. Have you ever listened to a podcast like this one and you wanted to bring up your own point or just chat with other people that are listening at the same time? Well, let me tell you about Spotify Greenroom. This is the first social audio platform made just for sports fans. The app is free to download, and once you're in, you can talk with us, other fans, athletes, insiders in real time about your favorite sport or team. Download the app, currently available on iOS devices, Create a profile, link your Twitter, join one of the groups for the latest league updates, and then you'll see us there. Spotify Greenroom, changing the way we talk sports.